How's everybody? I'm in the way. A little bit, just a little bit. Well, you don't need a microphone in this room. It, it has its own microphone, an echo and stuff. So, you know, my name is uh, Matthew Knowles. I'm also a professor at TSU. Uh, you know, I have my MBA and PhD, so I'm Professor Knowles at TSU, I'm Dr. Knowles, uh, and I'm Mr. Knowles. What you can't call me is Matthew Knowles. <laughs> you can't call me. But you, know, you can call me any of the others. But I want to welcome you to my seminar. I want to get to know the audience. How many high school students do we have? Raise your hand. So most of this room is high school. How many college students do we have? All right, we have a few. How many parents do we have? We have a, a that's the second number, it's our parents. So we have high school students that's looking to go to college, right? Have you, uh, who's made their decision where, where they're going to college? Where are you going? I would love to go to Baylor. Baylor and yes, uh, Dallas. Yes, sir. And, and what would you want your major to be? Um, I, want, I want to be a doctor, okay. or my second plan would be a therapist. Okay. Both in the same field. Close to family. Sort of, kind of. One of the other ladies said to him, What's, where are you going to school? I want to go to Prairie View. Prairie View. Okay. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> Although you might want to consider Texas Southern. <laughs> <laughs> When I look out this window, and, and you guys are high school students, has anyone seen what's out this window? No, sir. So what's out this window is about a thousand white people, <laughs> and it's a gun show with all types of guns, from semi-automatic guns, all sorts of weapons, and, and all sorts of uh, ammunition. And there's nothing funny about it. Nothing. You guys need to know that's the world you're going to live in. And those white people are down there getting ammunition for you. Now, I do know that, right? They're not down there for any other reason because they're frightened of us. And when I look out that window, I hope y'all take life serious because that's not the world that I grew up in, but that's the world you're going to grow up in. So I expect for you guys to be leaders, not followers. Leaders. And I expect you to make a difference. And that's why you're here, right? To make a difference in the world. And you can do that. But if you don't believe, guess what? Nobody else will believe. And it all starts with passion. Anybody know what passion is? Speak up. I, I like people to speak up. One of the things I tell my students, you have to have energy when you talk. You talk all shy. Shy people finish last. I want the room to say that on three. One, two, three. Shy people finish last. And that's true. In this world that we live in, you can be shy and passive and hold your head down. You'll finish last. That's a promise. So people that are served, look you in the eye, have energy. This is, I could have this presentation with them now, so people that have energy. But that's not energy. This is energy and confidence. So it starts with passion, intense desire or enthusiasm. You get excited. You go to bed at night thinking about it. You wake up in the morning thinking about it. That's passion. What's your passion? Um, I want to be a script writer. Oh, that's great. Script writer. What's your passion, young man? <laughs> My passion is that. Is what? Stepping. Stepping. That's your passion. So how do we make a career out of that? <laughs> is the question that you have to come up with. I love your passion and there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing at all. But it's how do we make that a career, your passion. And you can do that. See, I think when you live your passion, you never work a day in your life. And it has to be your passion. We have parents in here. It can't be your passions, parents. Parents, it needs to be your kids' passions. Right? I didn't care if Beyonce wanted, and Solange wanted to be a doctor, a lawyer, or an Indian chief. I didn't care. 
My job as a parent was to surround them with all the tools that they needed to be successful. Again, to surround you with all the tools. You want to be a stepper? We have to surround you. You need to go to dance school. You need a whole number of things. You need to go to college and maybe take, you know, dance. Maybe you become a great choreographer. There's many things you can do with that career. A lot of people look at, oh, I mean, that's, see, I'm excited that that's your passion. I shake your hand on saying that that's your passion. You go get it, all right? So it's about living your passion. Folks, these are the people in the world that are successful. They had a passion at your age, something that one thing, not two things, not three things, not four things, they had one thing one thing that they were passionate about. And they worked on that, and they worked on that, and we'll talk more about that passion, but it starts with identifying your passion. Raise your hand if you don't know what your passion is. It's okay, it's, it's okay. it's okay to say, I don't know. That's a smart person, to be honest and say, you know what, I don't know yet. So I applaud you for raising your hand. Anybody else that don't know what their passion is? What's your passion, young lady? Second in a row with the orange, that, a yellow shirt on, that would be you. Oh, okay. <laughs> Can't hear you. My passion is to become All right, that's your passion. So we have to figure out how to surround you with that. That's what you should be working towards. So we know if you're going to be a nurse, you need to go to a school that really focuses on nursing, right? And science is important. What's your passion, young lady? I can't hear you. I'm telling you, I want you to come back to me with some energy, like you're confident about your passion. What is your passion? Dance and discipline. Dance and? Can't hear you. Can anybody else hear that? We want you to come with some energy with that. Dance and business something. Only. I don't know what that means, business, business owner. You want to own a dance? Did I, did I make y'all run that quick? Oh. <laughs> so we have four seats here. Those are please standing up and take a seat. Oh, oh. So again, we're talking about passion and living our passion. We, and again, we, we have three seats up here, guys. You live your passion, you never work a day in your life. When you live your passion. So, what do you think coexists with passion? It will be in the next slide. It will be work ethics. Because if you're passionate about stepping, then you don't mind practicing stepping, do you? You see how it works? When he, his passion is stepping, he don't mind practicing stepping. That's why if you pick a passion, your brother, your dad, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, make you do something you don't want to do, you're not successful in it. You're not successful in it because it coexists with passion, it's work ethics. You can only be good at something if you work at it. And there's a book that says you have to do something 10,000 times. There's a book called Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell. Anybody want to write that down? Outliers by Malcolm Gladwell, and it talks about to be an expert, it's 10,000 times you have to do it. So most of you, how many times have you stepped, young man? No, that's not my question. How many times do you think you've stepped? About 200 times, so you've got 9,800 more times to do it. And then you become really good at it. That's why some people are really, really good at something. I assure you, Beyonce and Solange have performed 10,000 times. That's why they're good at it. It's Outliers, O-U-T-L-I-E-R-S, by Malcolm Gladwell. I'm sure I disappointed most of you that you expected someone different, but as my students told, I'm a highly intellectual. Uh, and I'm blessed to have been highly successful. I guess they said that's highly paid. <laughs> so it's about work ethics. You have to work to be successful. It doesn't come 
overnight or easy. What's the next slide? Excuse me, guys, I'm fighting this dog I'm called. Being a visionary, what, what that means, being a visionary, is you see something that you want to do, and you know exactly how you're going to do it. And you don't care what others think about it. You don't care what others say about it. Successful people, most of them are visionaries, like Barry Gordy, who started Motown. He's a visionary. And it's thinking ahead. And visionaries don't ask other people's opinion. You know how you go and ask, you know, you ask people opinion? That's not being a visionary. A visionary say, you know, what I need for you to do is I'm on a step, so I need you to give me a scholarship. You ask for what you want. And what's the next one? The next one is, because I gave you the short version, we actually mislabel this seminar. Because I'm not going to talk about how to get in the entertainment industry, because most of you don't need to know about how to get in the entertainment industry. Most of you need to know how to get in college, how to define your career, not how to get in entertainment industry. We'll touch on that. But now that I see you and look in your eyes, I never know what I'm going to say. These guys know it. I teach at Texas Southern. I don't teach out a book because I am the book. Mm. <laughs> 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 it's all about planning, and that's what we're talking about. We're talking about planning your career, planning your destiny. That's what we're talking about, planning. Making sure that you have the right team, that you have the right information. A lot of that has to do with having the right information. And the next one is, we're going to talk about that. How many people in here want to get me in the music industry? Well, I want to be president. <laughs> but first, I have to be, you know, maybe I need to become like in this local government, and then maybe I need to be in a, sure. in a state government, maybe I need to go to law school. So yeah, we all have rights. I don't like to be president. Is that realistic? No. Is most of you being in the music industry realistic? No. Well, I'm going to tell you like it is. So again, raise your hand if you want to be in the music industry. So how many people here want to be artists? You take voice lessons? You take voice lessons? You take voice lessons? Uh, I don't know what part of music industry. Okay. Oh, you're an artist? I mean, a vocalist? Okay. You, got, you need to take voice lessons. You, need, you take voice lessons? It starts with the fundamental, the planning aspect. And you need to practice, 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 practice. But uh, let me just tell you something. We do 37,000 albums in a, uh, a major record labels, 1% is successful. What's 1% of 37,000? Anybody know the answer? It's 300 and 7 out of 37,000. So that would mean in this room, one, power, one ankle might be successful at most, an ankle. Not even a whole. I just want you to know that this is what you want to do. What's your chances? The same is the same with athletes. You know, uh, being NBA basketball is one percent. One percent of all people that want to play basketball because you're not committed to it. Because really, if you were wanting to be an artist, you'd be homeschooled because you have to practice that much. Successful artists, they were homeschooled because this is no joke, we're talking multi-billion dollars. It's a real industry. So education fits a different role for someone who's serious about it. Seminar that I give to parents uh, sometimes is, parents are talented and gifted children, what do I do? Talented and gifted kids, what do I do? And that's a, a brutal uh, lecture 
because parents don't want to hear what I have to say and what therapists have to say and entertainment attorneys have to say because it's a different kind of business. So if you really try to be in the, not trying, I don't use that word, if you're wanting to be in the music industry, that's a serious commitment that you and your parents have to make. Serious. Everybody got quiet on that bit. <laughs> <laughs> so, learning from failure. Before we play this, let me tell you that in life, I certainly have, you're going to fail in a lot of areas. You're going to fail in your personal life. You're going to fail in your professional life. You're going to fail in your home life. You're going to fail with your friendships. Failure will happen, especially at your young age. You will make mistakes. We all make mistakes, don't we? So I always say that mistakes and failure is an opportunity to grow, not a reason to quit. Think about that. Because we all are human, we're going to make mistakes. You're going to pick the wrong school, like Perry. <laughs> <laughs> that's a mistake. But that's okay. But that's okay. It should be Texas Southern. He said Perry. That's a mistake. But that's an opportunity to grow. That's your sophomore year, you could come around, come to TSU. Not a reason to quit. I want y'all to remember that. Failure in the States is an opportunity to grow, not a reason to quit. Sometimes we do things when we're not ready. We're not prepared. And that's why it fails. Because you're not prepared, you're not ready. You get excited, you know, it's not time yet. You know, I, I, I always uh, measure in this, like my grades, my grades for my students, the students that come on time or early, are my best students. The students that come late are my worst students. And I judge a room by it. people that come and leave. I don't know, I don't think I would leave if I had the opportunity to hear what someone successful had to say. Truly successful. I don't know if I would leave if I had the opportunity to hear someone who had accomplished everything you saw in the video. I think I would want to hear what they had to say. Well, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Fifteen 15. 15 people chose that. 15, 16, 17, 18. People chose that it wasn't important. And that's good for you to see because that's okay. Because in life, it works like that. It works like that. It's only a few that's going to be successful. And hopefully that's you. And you can't save everybody. I stopped doing that. Doesn't even bother me. With just one person, a person in here, wouldn't even bother me. So I thank you for seeing a significant sequence. Let's get a couple of more things. Let me just tell you. Let me tell you the things that, that were in there. Excuse me. One was they were too young, right? Y'all saw that. The other one was they got signed to Electric Records, but in both was on Electric Records, and they were young. So the owner, the president, had to make a decision. Do I want to get involved or do I want these little young kids? And she, she chose to get involved. I understand that. But sometimes in life, you don't get chosen because someone's ahead of you. That's better. Someone's ahead of you that's better. So that's why you have to work hard at this. If there's anything I want you guys to take out of this, is that successful people are passionate and they work very hard all the time. Like, the other thing is sometimes you need help to be successful. You can't do it all by yourself. You need help. I didn't slip the, the CD, she says that. I jacked it. It's the difference. <laughs> my, my. <laughs> but they needed help. I saw an opportunity with the song. 
the most significant thing also is even when you're successful, you're going to have to go through that process all over again, every day. Just because you're successful, people are going to challenge you every day. Although Destiny's Child was su successful, when she did her solo project, they said it wasn't good. She got, you would think, after all that success, the billions of dollars that they made, that people would not challenge her, right? But they did. So that's why I wanted you to review this video. And one of the last things I want to talk about, and then I want to do some questions and answers, is thinking outside of the box. Well, let's, let's think outside of the box. Anybody know what thinking outside of the box is? So I want two people to come up here. I'm going to show you what I mean. I'm going to actually show you what. You want to volunteer? That's what happens when you stretch. Come on. Come on up. You're going to have to bend this. I don't think you like jumping at all. Let's think about jumping. Let me, let me help you get in there because I don't want to lose it. I've already had a hundred of them. What's your name, Sway? Bliss. Look at everybody tell me your name. My name is Bliss. And where are you from, Bliss? I'm um, from here, actually. And you're going to school where? Stafford. Stafford. Yes, sir. And you want to go to college in Dallas, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, I remember. Mean, I mean, and what's your name? My name's Angel. Angel. And what high school, Angel? Um, I actually did Okay, talk about it. There's no right or wrong here. So, this is most of us in life. I call it box in thinking. Box in thinking is that when y'all were little kids and when we were little kids, our parents, our teachers, society conditioned us who we are right now. From our parents, our teachers, it's cold, I apologize. <clears throat> but let me give you an example. These are the kind of thoughts that we list. You would never, ever, are you serious? You think you're going to be able to go to Dallas at, at is it, uh, what's the university? At Baylor? You're going to be a doctor? No one's in our family has ever done that. Like, what are you thinking? You better go and be a hairstylist. You didn't go to high school, and you think, what, what is your, your, your dream that you want to do? Um, I aspire to be an actress. Okay, stop like there. You didn't finish high school. You want to be an actress? I'm just telling you the Wait. message is, Angel, let me do this. <laughs> you just prop right. You understand props, right? Okay. Believe it or not, Beyonce played a tree and some play ones. <laughs> Listen, you come from a very poor family and you think you're gonna be successful? You know, you need to pick another career that's more realistic. Angel, you're black. I don't know if you noticed that in a female. You, it's not easy for a black female to be an actress. You need to do something different. Plus, you came from a little small community. Angel, y'all get the messages that we get? And today, where you sit and where I sit, some older people, we still hear those messages. And that's what keeps us down, it's boxing and thinking. We're conditioned, as black people, we're really conditioned. We're really conditioned to fail, that we'll be average. That's how black people, we've been conditioned to be average. At best, to come late, to come not prepared. We've been conditioned that. We watch TV, it conditions us. We're conditioned. Well, they're conditioned to get guns. We're conditioned to fail. And that's called boxing thinking. And guess what? We only have people in our box just like us. So if Bliss is a hater, all the people in her box are haters. 
If angels not smart, all the people in her box are not smart. Is bliss is racist? All the people in her box are racist. We only associate with people like ourselves. Boxing thinkers only are with boxing thinkers. And when they move around in life, I want y'all to move around in that box right now. Just move around. Move around. Ask you around. Come on, Angel. Angel. Focus, Angels. Focus. Follow the direction. All right. Thank you. So when you were walking in that box, what stopped you? What did you keep bumping into? The walls. The walls. And in life, these boxing thinkers, which a lot of us are, we keep hitting walls. And we don't understand why it doesn't work. Why did that not work? Why did this always happen to me? Why is me all the time? Why am I a victim all the time? Because we're boxing and thinkers, and we're in this wall. We keep hitting it and bouncing it. Think it's going to give us a different type of results. We continue to get the same results every time. And we don't understand why I keep getting the same result. And a lot of y'all know it. A lot of y'all know if you're a hater, you hang out with haters. If y'all on <laughs> social media being nasty, your friends are on social <laughs> media being nasty. That's how it works. And like I said, if I get one person out of here like kind of says, you know, let me look at this, then I've accomplished what I wanted to accomplish today. So when you get out of this box, what's Kai? What did Kai? Kai, I want you to please help get these ladies out of the box when I lost them. There you go. No, not yet. Don't get this in a hurry to get in the seat. I'm going to put this box not yet. Kai. Okay. Not finished, sir. Now I want you to walk around this box. You don't have any walls now, right? You stop. You can give a hand. And that's how life is. You think outside of the box, there's no walls. There's nothing to say you can't do what you want to do. Only you and your head between your ears say you can't do it. And by the way, let me tell you young people about social media. We call it the Jedi mind trick uh, in our classes. I teach entertainment. We condition you. Remember how I told you? The entertainment industry, we condition you to think a whole lot of stuff. It's sad. I actually feel sorry for you, for young people. Because you have no clue what happens to you every day that we condition you with information. Most of it's false, most of it's salacious, uh, most of it's so we can make money. We condition you to go and have this type of activity or think these thoughts. I, I actually feel very sad for our young generation in social media. Every day we condition you and we give you all kind of stuff that you just take it and run with it. And that's what we want you to do. Take it and run with it. And talk about it. It makes us money. I hope y'all know that we are taking advantage of you every day. <coughs> every day. How does it feel to know that you are being taken advantage of? I want you to know, when you get that phone, when you begin to type, we are taking advantage of you. You are making us money. That's got to feel really bad. I was sitting where you were. I feel bad to know that our industry takes advantage of us. It takes advantage of people. We want you to get on there and just go crazy. We want to feed you stuff. We call it the Jedi mind trick. We sit in meetings and we, we, we actually strategize how we're going to get you guys to do stuff. Strategize it. Strategize. So you might want to think a second, a third time when you get on that device. We have now that 
the average one of you get on that device 2,000 times a day in a 24-hour period. See, we keep all this data. Y'all are getting played. Rather than picking up a, a, that phone to get information and knowledge, you're on there doing just the opposite. You say Chris Brown did this and that. Everybody's talking about it. Then for us, the streaming increases, the sales increases. We give you that information how we want to give it to you. There's no such thing as bad publicity. You're right. And we give it to you bad sometimes. So you shh, go take it away. So you can spend a whole day talking about it. So our advertising can go up on some of our sites since you're talking about it. And we're selling advertising because you're going to the sites. You get played. We uh, have a course that we're, we're going to teach called Impact of Social Media. Social Media, the impact. We got a strategy. Two years from now, there will be no free social media. Remember, I you heard it from from Professor Knowles today. Two years from now, there will be, and I said there will be no social media, there will be no free social media. The key word is free. You know, in the, in the drug world, you, you give a person drugs and get them what? Uh-huh. No, it's a word, begin with A. <coughs> addicted. You give them drugs so they can get addicted, so they have to have it. So we've given you a drug you have to have every day. And now that we've got you on it, we're going to now make you pay for it. And it won't be a lot. It won't be, it'll be $3.99, $2.99, but it'll be billions of people around the world. Billions at $2.99. And record labels and social media and streaming companies are all going to merge. That'll be three years. And it's a strategy. We've known this for years. None of this is by luck, but you, more and more. Have y'all noticed more and more y'all have to get on this phone? <laughs> have y'all noticed that more and more you've got to get on your phone? Yes. Has anybody noticed that? Yes. That's strategy. That's not luck. So I feel compelled at least lets you know what's going on. Well, you can do what you want to with it. Parents, you can do what you want to with it. Teachers, you can do what you want to with it. Be careful. Question and answers. The only bad question is the one you don't ask. Let me tell you what smart people do. When smart people have an opportunity to ask a question and learn, they take advantage. People are not so smart, though. Any questions? Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. My name is Savion Curry, and my question is, like, after the artist has, you know, the music down, they record it and everything, what is the best thing for them to invest in after that? Well, the beauty today in, in the music industry is that you don't have to get a record label. That uh, the, the person who discovers music for us in the record industry are just regular people. They are the people who tell us that something's good. When you put something up on YouTube or anywhere you put it, you know, the, the public says if it's good or not. So it's about taking your end product and putting it up on, on YouTube and social media for music. Uh, let me tell you, give you three places. You got something to write this down? Okay, one is called Band in Town. B-A-N-D-I-N Town. And the program is called Big Break. It is just designed to highlight emerging artists like yourself. You got that? Yeah. The second one is Spotify Emerging Artist Program. It's called Rise. And you receive special placement and edit editorial programs on Spotify. So you go research those two things, you're in. Spotify is called Rise, R-I-S-E. Those two things right there, 
you can get on and, and people are telling you to be good enough. Yes, ma'am. Yes. What are some of the degrees that a person can get in entertainment behind the scenes? There uh, is one that we, again, I teach at Texas Southern. The School of Communication is called <laughs> Entertainment Recording Management, ERM. Uh, these from the shirt. Degrees, my students are some outside that are getting a degree in the area you're talking about. ERM, Entertainment Recording Management. Is it a, a website again? Uh, artists, new artists? Rise, R I S E, with Spotify, and Band in Town. Appreciate it. But again, uh, at Texas Southern, the School of Communications, there's two degree programs. One is RTF, Radio, Television, and Film. So if anyone's interested in radio, television, or film, that's in the School of Communications. And then ERM, Entertainment Recording Management, is also in the School of Communications. You get a degree in that program. We have internships, we get our students. We have 25 students from Mexico to all in the U.S. that was interning, working for other corporations this summer. Yes, sir. Um, outside of the box, who would be the greatest book that you read that has changed your life? Outside of the box? It'd probably be Malcolm Gladwell. The one you just said? Oh, the outliers. Yeah, outliers. It was a really great book. Keep your hands up, I get to you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, as a team, do you remember your biggest aspirations? As a who? As a team. As a team. Do you remember your biggest aspirations? I've been focused all my life, just like my kids. I always wanted to be a businessman. Always. My dad uh, was a truck driver. He made $30 a week. A week, not an hour, a week. He convinced those white people to let him have that truck. He would go tear down, tear down houses and the copper, the metals. He would get an old car, he'd buy it for 25 bucks. He'll make five, six hundred dollars selling all the parts. My mother made three dollars a day as a colored maid. It's tough being a parent and being a manager because I have a what we call a fiduciary duty, a responsibility uh, not to be biased towards my daughter. And that becomes difficult. Sometimes I had to make decisions, many times, that were not best for Beyonce. They were best for the group. And that was my responsibility, is to make decisions best for the group, not best for Beyonce. That was, I would say, the heart. Do you have any tips on dominating a field that African Americans are not really proficient in? And what is that? Well, for me, I thought it was a degree of that. Merchandising, that's a predominantly white woman or white male field. There's not many people that, people of color, that tap into that. And it's not about what you know, it's who you know, and I don't have any same connections. That's my peers that I pressure. So are there any tips that you can give me or others? Well, I first of all suggest if you're out of school, high school? Yes, I'm I graduate. You going to college? I graduate college. Where? Lamar University. Okay. You need to go to New York to the fashion industry. You need to get out of Houston. Number one. <laughs> you can't network in Houston for fashion. You have to go to Houston. I mean New York. You have to intern, work for free, build relationships. Get out of Houston. New York number one, LA number two. That's what you have to do. You can't do that in Houston. About three more questions, folks. Yes, sir. Um, how do you think an artist and their team? That's that Bermuda look. <laughs> how do you think an artist and their team? Got the Bermuda socks. With <laughs> 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 jacket, bow tie, Bermuda all day long. <laughs> How do you think an artist and their team should adapt to way to adapt to the way the public consumes music? Now, well, it, it works in the artist today's favor because the public we're consuming more music than ever before because of streaming. Uh, so it works in the artist's favor to make sure that they on the streaming platforms, uh, that they on YouTube, that they're on social media with their music and not the negativity. How would you compare sales? That's two questions. I'm sorry. <laughs> we'll come back around to you. All right. So, 
You may profess that, I don't say. Dogs and cats living together, mass is You might know what a movie that's for. Dogs and cats living together, mass is Ghostbusters. It was like, what the hell is Ghostbusters? <laughs> Tom McKinney. I knew it would come to me. My brain finally processed it. So you know why you want to go to Tom McKinney? Tom McKinney is uh, here in Houston and Dallas. Tom McKinney is still Beyonce's vocal coach. He was Michael Jackson's vocal coach, Salon's vocal coach, Kelly's vocal coach, uh, Justin Timberlake's vocal coach, and he lives here in Houston. And his number is, see, you have to have information. That's why you come to the city, ask questions and get information. Look how many people missed out. I'll give it to you now. Keep moving. Angel. Angel. Angel, uh, Angel was in Trinity 5 7. Gospel. Are y'all familiar with Trinity? They're the number one female trio ever in the history of music. So I've been very blessed to have the number one, number one trio in the history of music. Trinity 5 7, number one. Pop and R&B group in the history of music. Destiny's Child, number one female artist in the history of music. Beyonce. The only time that has ever happened in the history of music, two sisters to have a number one record at the same time. Only time in the history. See, I do historical stuff. <laughs> and guess how many people chose not to want to hear? They, they don't want to hear, hear from someone who's died. Like, at Xerox Corporation was the number one sales rep in the world three out of four years. They chose not to want to listen to me. They chose to want to go do something else.